Here we'll introduce you to solubility and have a look at how different substances dissolve in each other. Solubility can be thought of as the ability to dissolve. Here we'll look at a few substances and see how they dissolve in each other. We'll start by adding some vegetable oil to water. We have a glass with some water and we'll pour some oil into it. We see that the oil separates from the water and floats on top of the water. The bubbles of oil gradually join together. We'll give this a good stir and try to dissolve the oil in the water. But it won't dissolve. The oil just rises to the top and separates from the water. Oil and water will not dissolve in each other. So we'll make a note of that here, that oil will not dissolve in water. Because oil is less dense than water, it will always float to the top of the water. There have been some disasters where large amounts of oil have leaked from oil tankers or pipelines. Here's an aerial photograph of oil that leaked from the tanker Exxon Valdez when it hit a reef in 1989 and ruptured. The oil floating on top of the water shows up as an oil sheen or oil slick. Unfortunately, the crude oil or petroleum that floats on water is very sticky and sticks to the feathers of birds, preventing them from flying. This bird will die if the oil is not cleaned off of it. The next materials we'll try are butter and water. When we try to add a piece of butter to the water, it tends to stick to the spoon. The water actually repels the butter. Notice there is no sign that the butter is trying to dissolve in the water. We'll try to stir it again, but again the butter sticks to the spoon and we have to bang it on top of the glass to get it off. We see that no matter how much we stir, the butter will not dissolve in the water. It just floats on top. So we'll make a note here that butter does not dissolve in water. Butter is sort of an oily material. We have seen so far that oily materials do not like to dissolve in water. Now we'll add some oil to the mixture and see what happens with the butter and the oil. Can you make a prediction of what'll happen? We pour some oil in this and it rises to the top. But notice that the butter is in the oil layer. It floats on top of the water, but not on top of the oil. We'll stir the mixture. This time the butter does not stick to the spoon. It is more attracted to oil than to the spoon. Notice the size of the piece of butter is getting smaller. If we left this long enough, the piece of butter would eventually all dissolve in the oil. So we'll make a note here that butter does dissolve in oil. Oily materials do not dissolve in water, but they do dissolve in each other. Now we'll add some table salt to oil and see what happens. Can you make a prediction? We'll use some sea salt and add a teaspoon of it to oil and give it a good stir. But notice that the crystals of salt tend to sink to the bottom of the glass. We'll speed up the video a bit. After a while, all of the salt we added has sunk to the bottom and none of it has dissolved in the oil. Even after stirring again, the same thing happens. 
it just sinks to the bottom. So we'll make a note here that salt does not dissolve in oil. Now we'll add some water to the oil and salt in the glass and see what happens. Can you make a prediction? When we add the water, notice the oil rises to the top of the water, as we would expect. The water layer is quite cloudy. As it clears, notice that the salt crystals are now at the bottom of the water layer. Bubbles of air that were in the salt and the water gradually rise to the surface. Let's stir the mixture. We see that there is still some salt on the bottom, but much less than we started with. The salt is dissolving in the water. We'll stir it again. And after it settles, we see that almost all of the salt has now dissolved in the water layer. So we'll make a note here that salt dissolves in water. So we'll do a little summary. Because butter dissolves in oil, this suggests that oily materials dissolve in other oily materials. But because oil and butter do not dissolve in water, we can say that oily materials do not dissolve in water. We know that salt dissolves in water, so we'll state that down here. But salt does not dissolve in oil, which suggests that salt does not dissolve in oily materials. Materials that dissolve in oily materials are said to be fat-soluble. Some examples of fat-soluble materials are vegetable oil, such as canola oil, corn oil, olive oil, and peanut oil, butter and margarine, lard, which is sometimes used for making pastry, coconut oil, and some vitamins, including vitamin A, D, E, and K. Materials that dissolve in water are said to be water-soluble. Some examples of water-soluble materials are table salt or sodium chloride, table sugar, which is also called sucrose or white sugar, baking soda, which is also called sodium bicarbonate, food coloring, and vitamins B and C. Some products that we use, like this type of wood stain, are labeled as water-based. This means that this stain can be dissolved in water before it dries. Therefore, it shows that brushes in your hands, etc. can be cleaned up using soap and water. Just be aware that once this stain dries, it will not be water soluble anymore. It will be more permanent. Some products, like this type of wood stain, are labeled as oil based. This means that this stain is fat soluble only, and will not dissolve in water, even when it's still wet. It is recommended that you wear gloves when using oil-based stains or paints. This is because they cannot be cleaned off your hands using soap and water. Paint thinner or similar solvents must be used to clean brushes when using oil-based stains and paints. When using any product, it is very useful to know whether it is fat-soluble or oil-based or whether it is water-soluble.